Hello everyone, this is Leo again. We are, I'm bringing you the second deck for the out of the box challenge. Today we're going to be talking about Silhouette. Um, Kat would be doing this, but we had some issues come up. So I'll be doing the deck list, uh, oh, the deck profile for this uh, for him. Uh, he will be playing in the game on uh, Friday, so don't worry about that. We will still get that game done for you guys. Um, but if you didn't watch the previous episode, uh, you might be wondering like, what is the out of the box challenge? What's the out of the box deck? Um, so this is a set of restrictions or a set of deck building restrictions that we're putting on ourselves, uh, saying that we can only use cards from a given set, right? So in and it has to be a set where the deck has to be first introduced. Um, so that's why we are doing um, silhouette today. Uh, we are allowed to use the cards in the set for that nation. Um, and we're allowed to use the the uh, triggers and the perfect guards from a trial deck. Uh, that, that means we do not use the nation OT. We don't use the good PGs. We are just using what is in the set, right? We don't count reprints, so we can't use things like Combine Rusher, things like Kybri, uh, anything like that. Those things that are reprints, we cannot use. It has to be the first printing of a card in a set right so you know we can't use skybury like so this deck profile will not have combine rusher even though i know you'll be thinking well he's in the set although that is true if you were to buy a split of you know clash of the heroes like brandgate you wouldn't get a set of combine rushers because it is a secret rare right um we also don't allow sneak peek or box shopper promos we're trying to we're trying this uh challenge is about seeing how good a deck is built by bushy road right like how good is this deck out of the box right so we'll go over the what the deck is going to look like obviously this deck is not optimized clearly we are talking about a deck that is using almost essentially no ex uh, external support outside the, the triggers and the the perfect guards so we'll start off with the ride line so for uh silhouette there's no uh real need to run more than what is uh just the ride line because the grade one and the grade two don't really have rear guard effects they do however let you search for uh the grade one set order and then the second one allows you to pitch your uh arm cards and just get them back when he's uh wrote upon by the grade three uh then we have trigger units here we have just the generic trigger units we're playing four crit four front four heal three draw and then we're using the vanilla ot uh if when we do the videos, you might see that we use different triggers. That might just be because we couldn't find the trial deck ones. They are pretty old at this point. So a little hard to come by, but we will just be using vanilla triggers. No effect, anything like that. As long as, long as it's a, a vanilla front, a vanilla crit, a vanilla heal, vanilla draw, you're, you're good to, tr to do this challenge. And obviously, just a vanilla OT because we don't want the game to be determined by one of the effect OTs, right? We don't, we're trying to see what the deck can do, not what the over trigger can do. So we still allowed the vanilla one. Although it can be pretty in fact impactful, it's not really as in, as insane as some of the other ones. So we decided to just keep the the over trigger. Who knows? We might move from this in the next one. Try maybe just doing no OT. I know people really enjoy content that has no OT, so we might do that. Uh, moving on, we have perfect guards. These are the shitty perfect guards. Uh, again, we're trying to see what the deck can do and. You know, we're trying to pl play it as, as low budget as we can. So we're just using the trial deck PGs. Uh, no, none of that good good ones, right? Because um, if you can't afford them or something like that, the, the reason we, we chose to use the trial deck PGs is because you can just go buy a trial deck and you can just have these cards available for you at all times, right? You're not putting this in like your, your competitive deck. These are just a little challenge for us. Uh, then we have four bustling mechanic Rodney. I think uh, he's pretty good. He, if you have a Vanguard attached this turn, he gets plus ten. You might be wondering what is attached. We'll get to that when we get to the Grade Three silhouette. Uh, but he will restand uh, at the end of the battle. Your Vanguard with silhouette in its card name attacked a Grade Three or Greater Vanguard. If your front row has no rear guards, uh, that might. Be be a little weird for you you might be thinking like how the hell are you gonna get that done but you'll see as we go along then we have machineries factory who uh in the order zone has two effects the first one being you can rest it to like a top seven choose an armed arms card 
from among them, reveal it, put it into your hand if your drop has a card with the same name, and if you're, uh, you discard it if your drop does not. And then if you put a card into your hand, you have to put this card into soul. Hey, at least if, if uh, you need soul, this is perfect. You can keep, you can use more than one, right? Just constantly play these. And then the second effect is if you have a grade three or greater vanguard with silhouette and this card name, put it into soul. Choose up to two cards with armed arms in their car different card names from your drop. Call them to open rear guard. The ability to just get two units is insane. Uh, that the and and it doesn't really cost you anything because it just goes into soul. It's great. Then we have the first armed arms. Uh, left or L, I guess. Uh, in the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, when this unit attacks a Great Three or Greater Vanguard, if you have Vanguard with Silhouette in its card name, you can counter blast one and draw a card. This card is pretty cool because, as you'll see later on, we get to use that uh, effect more than once. So it's pretty good. You can be able to just constantly draw cards as long as you have the uh, counter blast to do it. Then we have the right arm. Uh, this one, when it attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard with Silhouette, you can counter Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's Grade 2 or Greater Rearguards, retire it, and it gets plus 5. Having access to removal is pretty good, although this one's not as great. I do believe in the future, the way they're going to uh, power up this deck is by giving Silhouette different arms, right? Obviously, right now we just have left and right, but in the future we might have you know, much more interesting effects, right? So, but for right now, these are the two, the only two armed arm cards we have. Uh, then we play uh, three Fluctuate Buster Barrage. Uh, this one is a Blitz Order that allows you to choose up to two gray, two or greater unit cards with different card names from your drop, call them to Guardian, and then choose one of your units and it gets plus 10. Uh, this card, I believe, is going to be much better in a deck like Ava, where your grade 2 and graders have a lot of shield. Uh, but in this one, the cool thing is that you get to um, call back your arms, right? You're going to be constantly cycling through these arms because they're going to try and retire them. Um, so you just get you keep recycling them for shield. Uh, you'll essentially get a 20k shield from this. Pretty good. Then we have Lady Fencer of Bipolar Nebula. I actually really like this card. So when she attacks, if your drop zone has a Blitz Order, uh, you can Soul Blast one and she gets plus 10 until the end of the battle. And then at the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard. You can Counter Blast one, bind this unit, search your deck for up to one Grade 2 or Greater Blitz Order without Regalis Peace, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your, the deck. If your drop has a Blitz Order, you may search for a Set Order instead of a Blitz Order. That's why you play the previous one, because she can get, uh, she can get you that card in hand. And if you already have a Blitz, right, or maybe you use them already, you can just get one of the Grade 1 uh, set orders. And that's pretty good. I really think that Lady Fencer of the Bipolar Nebula is going to get slept on because I think she's a really, really good card. Um, so that's why we're playing four of. And then the final card is the four copies of Silhouette. Uh, there's only three here because one of them is in the right line. Now let's talk about Silhouette a little bit. So... Uh, on Vanguard Circle, once per turn, at the end of the at the beginning of your attack step, you soul blast one, you choose up to two of your rear guards with armed arms in their different card names and attach them to this unit. Uh, what, what is attaching? Well, you move the attached units to Vanguard as stand. They cannot attack. The attached unit gets their power and their and abilities continuously, and they are moved to rear guard at the end of turn. So you'll want to have your left and right arm available and then they'll get attached and that's why the the uh, units themselves had van rear abilities because when they get moved to van silhouette gains those abilities and that's why it puts van on the card right because if you read their effects it says that they need to have a great through getter vanguard with silhouette in their card name and that's impossible because if they were to be the vanguard it couldn't be silhouette right so you get an insane amount of power because he gains their power he becomes a 33k uh, body just off of that ability and then if you persona ride those units get to keep the persona ride so he becomes a 63k attacker all right i believe in the optimized list of this you'll definitely be playing um a crit three front because you that uh, getting a front is incredible you get the same effect as a persona ride but being able to pressure your opponent with almost an unguardable attack. They're going to have to use perfect guards or they're going to have to uh, have enough shield. With When it's at 33 without Persona Ride and without a front, 
that's more than uh, one of the effect uh, front triggers. That's a lot of guard that they're going to have to throw down. For that's just a base power. If you're on Persona right turn, that's 63k. That is an insane amount of power. That is that is literally perfect guard or die, right? Um, so I, I actually really like his effect. It's pretty cool. I, I'm um, excited to see what they do in the future for arms. I want to see maybe they do some more interesting. Maybe he gets something like guard restriction. Maybe he gets something like uh, a critical. If he can get a critical, that would be insane. Um, maybe an arm that has like maybe no power or maybe it has like 5k. Uh, but it can gain a crit when it is attached to a vanguard, right? So it would have no abilities on rearguard, but it would be really strong on vanguard. Um, and then his second effect which is why I think he's so good, is that he gives you access to four attacks, is that at the end of the battle this unit attacked, you choose up to one of the units that's attached to this unit and move it to an open rear guard circle as stand. So if you have that grade one uh, mechanic that restands, if there's nothing in the front row, you'll activate that effect prior to activating silhouette. He'll restand and then silhouette will move one of the arms. Optimally, you want to move the one that draws you a card. You move that one to the rear guard and you have a fourth attack. That's insane right but with that we end up we end our second episode of the out of the box challenge uh so next episode we'll have the match between out of the box vermilion and out of the box silhouette um, i'm really excited to test these decks out i love doing deck building challenges because it makes you have to think differently right i feel like people in vanguard really have a, a constrictive mindset of like no you know we have to we have to only follow what the meta is and since japan's already played these cards they know what's best and it kind of gets us into this mindset of never trying things so that's what we're trying to do with this series maybe give you a different perspective on stuff see what you think uh like obviously i've, I've discovered a lot of new cards we have a series here on the channel talking about cards that you might not consider you might think oh this is just like common bulk or rare bulk that could do something in your deck but with that i will leave you all and i'll see you on friday